Hey dividend investors, today I'm going to talk to you about Bank of Montreal and their dividend. Is it safe? Is it not safe? Let's get down and let's dig deep into this company. Let's really quickly just check out the chart and see how well it's done recently during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So really quickly and kind of funny in a way, um, if you go to the maxed out chart, you, you barely see the, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic at all. All you see is... So when you go to the maxed out chart on Yahoo, you can see how the bank was up and down, up and down, up and down. To me, that right there is a sign that there's something coming up. We don't know what. There's going to be some kind of a quick recession, if not a quick one, a very long one. But uh, that is what happened. We've seen a massive, massive downturn. And basically at, at the lowest point, you're basically looking at something that was as a stock sitting around 62, 63, roughly like that dollars per share. And that is a massive decrease from something that was over a hundred dollars. It's a 40% downturn, but it's back up to a hundred dollars, which means that that is a 66 roughly percent increase from its lowest point. When we start looking at the COVID-19 pandemic, are the banks going to be hurt? Well, as of right now, the Canadian and American governments are doing their job right now, trying to make the uh, money as liquid as possible so that the banks don't go under. And that's what happened in 20 or 2008 when uh, they basically, the banks basically hurt themselves. But Something about Bank of Montreal is very interesting, and that is, it's been paying a dividend for 191 years. Something else about that dividend is, in that 191 years, guess how many times that they have decreased or stopped their dividend payments? Zero. They have only ever stopped increasing their dividend during hard times. Things like the 2008 crisis, where the American banks were really hurt badly. The Canadian banks obviously were hurt during that time, but all of the Canadian banks, including Bank of Montreal, continued to pay a dividend, and they continued to not cut or lower their dividends. Same as back in a lot of the really bad recessions in the 1900s and also 1800s. All the Canadian banks have done really well. Now, the Bank of Montreal, it does not just do work or doesn't just have banks in Canada. They have a couple of different banks around the world. So they're not just focusing in on Canada, even though that is their biggest segment of the market. Can the Canadian market recover? Probably. Wasn't doing very well before the pandemic? No. We were, in my opinion, in a recession going into this recession because there was higher job uh, losses as well as higher debt. Now, what we are worried about is all of this money printing by the government, what will it do to the economy? Obviously, it's going to spur a lot of spending once the pandemic is over, but will it raise interest rates? Well, if it does raise interest rates, the banks just make more money until it gets too high, and then that's when people start uh, defaulting on their mortgages and car payments and things like that. So, as, as of right now, you cannot really tell what happens in the past is going to be telling us what happens in the future, but when you start looking at 191 years, almost 200 years of paying a dividend and never cutting a good dividend or lowering a dividend... I'm going to say that the Bank of Montreal dividend is pretty darn safe. Now, I do hold Bank of Montreal, family members of mine do hold Bank of Montreal stock, so I may be just brainwashed myself. You should never listen to a random guy on YouTube. So, of course, do your own research. And their dividend right now, let's go check out what their dividend is currently sitting at. And their dividend currently is sitting at $4.24 per year for the per stock that they have or what you would have and that is roughly 4.3 percent from there it seems like a really good company it's got a nice volume of shares being traded right now which is good that's what you want to see it's going to be easier to get in and out of so between those two things if you're looking to get into a stock that pays a dividend of course bank of montreal is a fantastic choice however i'm going to really explain something to you that i like to explain to everybody and that is when you start looking at this one year chart We've seen how it really tanked out 
and then it recovered. Now it is currently trading within a range. If it breaks past that 101, that is when it's going to start riding a bit higher. However, right now, if you wanted to get in today, I would say, let's say for example, you wanted to put in a total of $20,000 or something like that into Bank of Montreal today. I wouldn't be looking at putting in 20,000, all of it today. I would put in maybe 5,000. And the reason for that is, of course, now when you're looking at it, you're at the top of the trading range or pretty darn close to it. If you put in five today, at least you've locked in that dividend percentage today. If it's if it breaks above a dollar one a share, it's going to ride a little bit higher, and then you just wait for a little bit of a pullback and you have to put another five or ten thousand or whatever into it, a part of what you wanted to put in. However, if it dips down to ninety dollars, that's when you start loading up a little bit more. And this is what I was telling a lot of people before I even started this YouTube channel. The couple of years leading up to this pandemic, you want to stash cash because the market's at the top. It's not getting past the top. Of course, it's going to keep on rising because just other companies are doing their thing. But when it comes to Canadian banks, it was good to, if you wanted to get a dividend, put a little bit in. But you want to save money for when there's a downturn because when a sector of the market, specifically the banks, all of the banks in Canada, they kept on hitting their top and bouncing down five to ten dollars, hitting their top, bouncing down to five or ten dollars. And they did that for about a year and a half. And anytime that happens, that is when you want to start stashing cash because at that point there's going to be a downturn. It's going to be more than five or ten dollars and that is when you buy in. And you buy in a little bit each time it's coming down and that's what I personally did. I had a good amount of money set aside saying, hey, this is for when there's a downturn in the market. I personally thought it was either going to be student loan debt that was going to create a recession or just our red hot housing market and interest rates had to go higher, um, but that didn't happen and it seems like it's just getting worse. So maybe we might have a, another, another recession, who knows. But at this point in time, I think they're pretty darn safe, especially when they've paid a dividend for 191 years. I hope that you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys again next time.